started the fire. Uh, this show has <laughs> just started, and it's already on fire. Started. It's a kickoff yeah. presented by Ram Trucks. He's Gary Strysky. I'm Jason Fitz, and here we are getting ready to start. All of a sudden, you're just throwing no, things into the no, fire. No, no, we're not going to. We're not going to bury the what? lead. Are we celebrating a birthday or are we preemptive, preempting Christmas? We'll get or to this both. in a second. We'll get to this, but I will justify this. Fala la la llama sweater, all right? Because everybody's asking me, what about Thanksgiving? Let me ask you this. Let me ask you a question, Gary. What does Gary Streisky do at halftime of a football game? You sit down, you maybe have a beverage, right? Yeah. You have a snack, right? Yeah. You talk to your friends and your family, right? Yeah. What do you do on Thanksgiving? A beverage, a snack, and you talk to your friends and family. Thanksgiving is the halftime of the Christmas season. It starts November 1st. The music's going. The fa la 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 sweater is all out there. That's I mean, that's pretty good. I got, Thank no, you very I, got, much. I got no rebuttal. You know what? I really it's, don't. It's a glorious day around here because our boss, it's his birthday. Yeah. Say happy birthday to the one, the only, Mickey Mouse. Woo! 94 years Believe old. Believe it or not, he does, in fact, sign our checks, the digital version of our checks, and he actually, <laughs> he actually gifts us those presents every week on Thursday. So happy birthday, Mickey. We can't wait to celebrate many, many, many more. Okay, you know what, speaking of birthdays too, we don't do this very often, but we got somebody on our crew. DJ, it is his birthday. I think, we, look, we got, oh, we oh, even put the that. Georgia stuff up for him. Mickey Mouse Damn. giving him free cake to you. Like, it's just a big celebration for everybody here. That's like, amazing. One of the best. And I say this all the time at the end of the show. I'll say it at the beginning. There's a large crew of people that work really hard so that I can stand around here like an yeah. idiot with a hat on and yeah. talk about college football. DJ's one of the best. So we love him and happy birthday. They try to shoot all of this down, by the way, in the meetings. But Fitz is going to do what Fitz wants to do. Look, I am going to do what I'm going to do. And you know what this weekend I'm going to do? I'm going to watch a huge slate yeah, it's gonna be of great. college football. By it's the way, be great. That, Happen in horn section. Give me now. one game here that you're that you got your eye on. Are we calling an upset alert on TCU Baylor or SC UCLA? No, I think the most important game of the weekend is definitely SC UCLA, and it's important for an Ooh, obvious reason because, really? frankly, I still think that there's a huge opportunity for USC to get their way into the college football playoff conversation. They're, if they win the Pac-12, they're going to be in that combo. So, you know, this game is everything for so them. I was heavy on that early in the season, but I'm shifting my focus to what's going on in the Big 12 and the defending champ Baylor Bears, who are hosting TCU, currently right now number four in the CFP. They've already booked their ticket to the Big 12 championship, have the Horned Frogs, but man, Baylor can cause a lot of disruption if they take care of business against that undefeated TCU team. That game in Waco is going to be bananas. TCU trying to become legends now. Let's talk to somebody that already achieved that status. Miller, the shotgun, gets free on the edge. Braxton Miller is loose. Spin move. Miller headed for the end zone. Dude, that was the spin move to oblivion yeah. with those defenders. Too. It's that amazing was, how so. easy some guys make it look, especially like I always use the O button, like the O guy playing, yeah. you know, all the video games. Like it just looks like somebody's hitting the O button and suddenly you got to spin. It's time for a legend. We bring legends on this show like all the time. Braxton oh, Miller joining is. us. You there guys know it. Like uh, not only the resume, like college football national champion, Big Ten most valuable player twice, twice the Big Ten offensive player. The, I'm reading your resume, but Listen, we're we can keep going, we, but we, we're limited on time. That we would take too long. We were watching. This is peek behind the curtain, right? They're getting your shot ready so that you look good. <laughs> it looked like they, they they had you use one of your awards to prop up the camera. So the question is, which <laughs> one are you sneaking back there so that we wow, got a good shot you of you? I ain't know y'all noticed that, man. That yeah, is my uh, my silver football. One of my silver footballs is out here in the basement in my theater room. He's a, he's probably one of the player of the years. I don't know. It could have been the Natty Award they give to us. Yeah. Uh, Braxton, fantastic to see you. We're going to get into one of your uh, recent ventures in the eSports community here in just a minute, but we can't start this thing without talking about the game on the actual field. What are your thoughts on your second ranked in the CFP Ohio State Buckeyes, man? Number two in the CFP, of course, undefeated, and they are letting it rip at any Let moment. Let it go, man. Letting it go. The offense is un unstoppable right now. The defense is unstoppable. They're doing their thing, man. They're playing team football. I love what they got going on. I enjoy watching my butt guys every Saturday morning, every Saturday night. I can't get enough of it. You know, I'm ready for next week. I'm taking my family out. Actually, I got a couple gigs before the game as well, so I'll be out there early tailgate. Notice he said he's ready for next week. We're not 
we're not paying any mind to this week's game because it's all about what's going down <laughs> next week I mean, against Michigan. I think the whole country's <laughs> talking about that. I mean, I spent all year, Braxton, just working on being able to say rivalry week. It's harder than people think. Yeah, slow down, get into the right. rivalry week. Uh, but we spent all week next week previewing it. But you're part of an event with EFUSE that's the rivalry before the rivalry. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing in the, in the uh, eSports landscape to get ready for this. Oh, yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I'm a big gamer. I've been a big gamer since I was young. And being able to bring the guys together, man, that I, you know, play ball with in the, in the locker room, being able to reach out to them and understanding where, you know, we all play games. It's not one guy that I know to this day that don't own a PC, an Xbox, PS5, or whatever. You know, that's a new thing now. People streaming on Twitch. And uh, E-Fuse, man, I've been a part of E-Fuse when they first launched. And uh, now it's time to take it up a notch and uh, play some crazy uh, games against these guys and play against Fortnite and uh, man, have some fun. You know what I'm saying? E-Fuse has been top, top in the uh, world with the, you know, the company as well, so. And we're talking about the, the MFAM gauntlet. So kind of talk to us about the logistics behind this event because you got some former players, some Ohio State guys actually competing in this. What's the difference between a rivalry on the field, which 99% of the population will never be able to experience as an actual D1 athlete at that level, but a lot of us can experience and, and sort of have a little bit of knowledge of being like, yo, I can get behind the sticks, and it gets rowdy with the strangers we talk to online. So what are the, what are the similarities that we're talking about there, Braxton? Oh, man, it's, it's competition all day long. You compete. Mm -hmm. You know, you still want to win at the end of the day. You know, you got a controller in your hand, you're looking at the screen, but, you know, you, you're facing somebody on the other side of that screen. You know, so it's dope, man. It's a great atmosphere. I love it. You know, I got the guys coming to the facility Sunday night. We're going to have a ball, man. It's, it's going to be like, you know, the old days. <laughs> I love the, the eSports spot. Anyway, like I'm a music kid, right? So growing up, I spent eight hours a day by myself in a room practicing music. Everybody thought that was great. Sometimes there's blowback now in the video game community in general. People are like amazed that kids are working so hard. I think uh, it's incredible. Uh, What's your prep like getting ready for something like this? Like what do you have to do mentally, <laughs> physically, and how much practice do you have to get? So I think, you know, I got a great teacher, man. My son, he's unbelievable at <laughs> Fortnite. That's awesome. He's That's awesome. crazy. He's upstairs right now playing on the PC. He don't use the controller. He's all the, uh, the uh, what's the it called? The keys, the, the, keys the keyboard, on the, keyboard yeah. the model, like everything, man. He's unbelievable. So I mean, I've been working with him for the past couple of days. <laughs> Braxton, what do you think the words per minute he can type is if he were able to just type it on the keypad? You know, we had to take those tests back in the day. I know what you know what we're talking about with that thing. <laughs> It's probably like 200 words a minute because he's like, clack, 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 clack. Oh I'm my just, God, I'm, I'm real. He's unreal. I, I, I'm just going to be the old guy in the block again here and just remind y'all, like, I grew up on Tech Mobile where there were yeah. only like three plays that you, you got could the joystick call. and then you got and the like, three you know, buttons. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah like you, had, you had two buttons and one little push, yeah, and now 50, like 56 more buttons now. You sit there, like, I'm sitting there watching somebody play Madden next to me, and I feel like I'm a pretty good Madden yeah. player. I watch somebody playing next to me. I don't even know what the hell their oh, hands oh, are yeah. doing. So, like, Fortnite total other world let's take a look at team ohio state by the way i think we've got this here some big names from both schools oh, yeah you got Troy Smith, we you got, got cardell better. jones you got cj stroud uh, so when you start talking about some of the guys that played at ohio state who stands out to you as the guy that you're like that's the one that's going to lead us to victory in this and you know one thing man i was roommate with ryan sager he's an un unbelievable gamer as well so i think ryan man i, I believe in ryan man he's gonna lead us to victory he is an ultimate gamer man and not just that, this ain't just for like fun and bragging rights. There's some serious bread at stake, right Braxton? Uh, what's the prize? Oh. And if your money is on Shazier, what else is going down that's gonna allow him <laughs> to, uh, to take home that 50K? That's a lot of money, man. Ooh. We gonna make it happen though, man. We gonna, we gonna pray before. We gonna get some more <laughs> games in. We gonna, hey, we gonna get some games in over the weekend, make sure we ready, prep. That's the whole thing about, Practice. you know, playing against the rivalry, man. You gotta. You got you to prep for it. It's practice. You know what I mean? so, practice. I, I mean, I'm just saying, I, like, I love Gary. But if Gary screws up on a video game and we got 50K on the line, I'm not going to love Gary anymore. Oh, yeah, anymore. no, listen, like, man. Let's if, just be <laughs> if, I cost you, if I cost you 50 racks because I hit the O instead of the X, yeah, that's no, what deserves. We're done. We're, we're done at yeah. that point. All right, this is on November 20th uh, at 8 p.m. Tell everybody how they can tune in, how they can support this. Yeah, so you can look at uh, eFuse, uh, look at the company, look at the Twitter, get the link on there. It's going to be live on Twitch. And uh, you can look at my Instagram as well. So I'll be streaming on my Twitch as well. 
uh, Richard Milley. You can look it up. Uh, so I'll be, be down there having fun with the guys. You know, they're getting over there jigging. Yeah, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We so, yeah, got to, before we get you out of here, though, I got to ask you. Because, I mean, this is about the video game portion of it. It just makes me think about the camaraderie you got with everybody, mm-hmm. right? On Saturdays, when you're watching Ohio State beat up on somebody, Who's in the group thread? Like, who are you talking with while all of that's going down? <laughs> that's crazy, man. We still got the same group chat from, from college. <laughs> so all my guys that I played ball with, man, from 2011 to 2015, man, we all in the same group chat. So we all we all talking stuff, and man. So it's ever, a good time. And nobody ever grows up. If you're part of any sort of group chat, you know, it's just like you guys are there suiting up yourselves, man. That's got to be awesome. Add one yeah. of us, Braxton, with just yeah. one time. Yeah, just, then you could kick us out. It's all good. Yeah, I can I only man. I, I'm just going to, like, I'll be the one that's in there, and all of a sudden everybody's like, no, yeah, not him. You, not, just not, get, you just get booted. Not the guy in Who's the llama Christmas sweater. <laughs> Braxton, man, good luck on this event. Good luck throughout the course of the season watching Ohio State. We appreciate you hanging out with us, my friend. My God, appreciate you guys, man. It's time for Built for Success, presented by Ram Trucks. I mean, you wouldn't be that mad at me if I lost you 50 grand, right? No, you'd be pretty mad at me. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I'm the guy that sits there and, like, debates for an hour and a half whether or not I'm going to spend 40 bucks on a pair of shoes. Yeah, you lose me true. 50 k yeah, that, That's true. That's a valid point. I'm wildly out. That that's, would not be built for point. success. The yeah. Pac-12 might be built for success. So, we're going to get college football analysts that can help us. The Pac-12 analysts, specifically Yogi Roth, joining us. Yogi, you just heard us talking Yogi. to Braxton. Like, <laughs> if, if, if you 50K on the line, who do you want to be your video game partner? Let's start with the important stuff. <laughs> well, I think it's you because of the sweater you're rolling with, man. So, I'm just going to ride on style today. You know, All you're right, well, bad news, Yogi. You ain't walking away with $50,000 based Ooh, off of but your... you're feeling good. <laughs> I mean, you're feeling good. Based, based off of just that assessment and judgment, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, that, that's, let's get to some actual football. I made the argument earlier that I think the Pac-12 is built for success. And this comes from a, a heated debate we've been having the last few days about Tennessee. If Tennessee wins out versus a Pac-12 champion, when you look at the conference overall, are they being undervalued in the playoff conversation? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I think USC is sitting in a solid spot right now. If they win out and do what they have to do, which is a more challenging path than anybody in the country, Right. Ranked team, obviously, this weekend in UCLA. Then they'll have a ranked team in Notre Dame. Then they'll have a ranked team, possibly a rematch against Utah or have to play Oregon. I mean, there's a bunch of matchups that could possibly exist in the title game, but nobody ranked higher than them has to go through three, three, three ranked teams to finish it off. So we'll find out. We'll learn a lot about them. I think overall, I was disappointed to see where Washington sat at the end of the day uh, in the ranks to see USC schedule. Like, I get the the narrative on them, but we're going to get to see them play. And the, the committee clearly values your wins more than your losses from everything that they told me when I went through the mock selection process. But then uh, my issue with the league, when I look at where U- UW sits, I, I got the UW game tomorrow on the Pac-12 network. They're sitting at 17, and they've got two wins against the current top 25 teams. You know who doesn't have those wins is Penn State or Ole Miss, who are ranked higher than them. So that, to me, uh, I was disappointed when I saw that because I think the way they're playing now, and if you're supposed to live week to week, then you live with Washington, I think, higher. Having one of the top two wins, I think, in the entire season, Tennessee's um, probably being the other one over Alabama. You could argue Georgia, Tennessee as well. But they're in the conversation, top two or three wins in the country with what they did on the road in Austin Stadium. Let's stick with uh, SC. Obviously, uh, the big showdown against UCLA doesn't hurt, obviously, their chances closing out the season, the regular season, with two top 20 matchups. What's impressed you the most uh, about Lincoln Riley's first year there with uh, the Trojans and, of course, Caleb Williams making the transfer as well? Huge part of it is, is the name you just said, Lincoln Riley, right? 33 new players, new faces. He got all these guys who came in from different schools to blindly trust him and one another. And I think you've, you've been around athletes throughout your entirety of your careers. It's hard to do that. That whole roster, that locker room, bought in in a dramatic way. I called a bunch of their games. You talked to players, whether it was Jordan Addison or Caleb Williams or Shane Lee or at the time Travis died prior to his injury. They all just bought in. And now you see this team, four and eight a year ago, on the precipice of a CFP invite if they could take care of business. These next three games, that that's impressive. And then defensively, you see some of those highlights. Their best players have gotten hurt, right? Eric Gentry, there might not be a more impactful inside backer in college football. He's 6'6", six, six, seven foot six and a quarter inch wingspan. He impacts the RPO zone read game more than anybody, I think, at Mike Backer in the nation. But they lost him a couple games. 
what they do? They found a way to put their best 11 on the field. So Tuli Tui Pelotu will probably be the defensive player of the year in this league. He's an All-American. He played middle linebacker. Like they just moved guys around and found a way. They create turnovers. They don't give the ball up. They score when they take it away from people. So I start with Lincoln Riley, and then I look at the players and say, man, have they bought in in all phases? And it showed up in most recent weeks, and now they'll be at full strength against UCLA in the Crosstown rivalry. All of that is fantastic, and you saw their CFP chances sitting at right around 7%. All that to say how fantastic they're playing, they still need some major help, because even if they win this week, and I think their organic chances goes up to like the low teens. So they need some shuffling of the deck, like one through six. I'm, I'm still CFP imagining what, like, what like Ming Ming and all the other elves are doing to try and figure this out, because I have no idea where we get these numbers from. I just know that <laughs> they're like, one uh, of the elf is over here trying 14 the sounds good. Uh, but give me your sense <laughs> on Oregon. I'm trying to make a little sense of what we've seen and haven't seen Bo Nix. Obviously, been a big conversation, but a couple of weeks ago, it was Bo Nix, Heisman candidate. Then they fall off in an upsetting loss uh, for, the, I think, the fan base. Where do you think they are now? And where are they going? Yeah, well, they're rolling. I mean, look, they lost. They still put up almost 600 yards of offense. Right? Bo Nix, while they lost, to me, is still a Heisman candidate. At least the nation overall touchdowns. I mean, you can't ignore how talented he is and the level he's playing. You also can't ignore this offensive line. I mean, they are running the football for 300 yards again over the weekend against Washington, and they're going to need this offensive line, especially if Bo Nix doesn't go. We'll find out. I think it's going to be a game-time decision if he can go this weekend against Utah, who's, by the way, playing their best football right now, especially on the defensive side. So I look forward to watching Oregon grow. I'm a huge Dan Lanning guy. You know, the number one thing you see when you walk in that facility or practice field are the DNA traits of the program. The first word is connection. This team is dialed. They didn't fall apart when they lost the opener to Georgia. They're not going to fall apart after the weekend's loss against Washington. They, they get stronger, but are they healthy? Offensive line, is Alex Forsyth going to go? He's an All-American offensive lineman, a center, kind of an anchor of their team. Already talked about Bo Nix. Uh, defensively, they're going to get healthy. DJ Johnson will be back. Brandon Dorless, I think, is at full strength. They're going to need that against a Utah team that now has Tavion Thomas playing well. Cam Rising is dramatically efficient. This defense is finding their way. So we will have another epic game in Austin this Saturday night. I, I mean, you said a lot of good about Washington and Utah and Oregon. I don't want to take anything away from that. But a little bit of a nightmare scenario where USC and UCLA – are there two teams that are in the best position to represent the Pac-12, a conference that and they're, they're not going to be a part of? <laughs> so, like, how awkward is it around the Pac-12 overall that these two juggernauts are not only representing the conference in so much, but also may not be there very long? You know, it, it's a fair question, but it really hasn't been that awkward. I, I've called a bunch of the games for both of those teams, and our league is dramatically committed to just telling the stories of the team, celebrating or putting them in a position from a storyline standpoint to make sure that you're talking about what's on the field. You know, the thing I learned over the summer, and I don't know if you guys tried it, but right around um, the end of June when this news broke, it was like everybody became a media rights expert and a conference realignment expert. And I learned really fast, like, I'm definitely not that. I want to be an expert on the game and on the team. And a lot of these guys that are playing, like Caleb Williams, I won't even be playing in the Big Ten when they go to that league. So. We've just doubled down, and all the broadcast crews I've talked to when you're around these teams, you just double down on the stories and the players and the scheme and the games. The games have been great. Uh, so to me, it's like deal with that when it happens, because uh, now the games thankfully are here, and that's become the great focus. And in L.A., I, I coach in four of these games, man. This is awesome. The players, this is the game they get up the most for because they all know each other. I mean, I coach at the Elite 11, and... Kayla Williams and DTR are both counselors at the Elite 11. Like, they oh, wow. all know each other. It's going to be competitive. Yeah, you know, Chip cool. Kelly, um, of course, Lincoln Riley. It's going to be an awesome environment at the Rose Bowl on Saturday. Yo, we're going to get you out on this. And, hey, listen, you can add your Pac-12. I'm not even going to call it bias, but you obviously know. Expertise. Yeah, expertise. And you know that conference through and through. Take a look at your crystal ball. Three regular season weeks remaining in this college football season. When that dust settles, who's your final four in the CFP picture? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think you could you gotta pencil give in me the four. winner. <laughs> okay, I'll, I guess I'll go Ohio State. I'll go Georgia. Um, I'd love to see TCU run the table. I think it'd be fun for That's the game. And then I'm going to go with SC because I do believe that they've got a path to go there. Yeah. Right. To be honest with you, like this is not the last time I checked. This is not the SEC CFP. Like this isn't a round robin <laughs> tournament. Georgia and Tennessee. Uh, to me, you've got to showcase 
literally what, what's in front of you. And I think for the Pac-12, you have six teams in the top 25 right now. So to me, you can call it bias or I call it reality. Look at what the playoff committee says. Six teams in the top 25. Look at five teams in the top 17. SEC is the same amount. So to me, like take the bias off of my hat or anybody else and just look at reality, right? There's a lot of talented players. A lot came via the portal. I would throw down UW against all the teams ranked higher than them outside of the Pac-12 wow. when you get all the way up to SC. Penn State, Washington, what would you do? Penn State has two bad losses. They don't have a quality win. And when I look at everything the CFP's told me when I've been in those meetings in the mock selection is that wins are valued. Quality wins are valued. And I look at this league with SC being the leader right now for the CFP, they got a chance to get great quality wins, as do the other teams already ranked. And again, I go back to the point of Bama's one and two against top 25 teams. Penn State, 0-2. Oh Ole Miss, 0-2. Oh I just think that you can't argue some of those facts, man. So I look forward to it. To me, I think the Pac-12 is playing incredible football. And not only because I work there, but I take the top six quarterbacks in the Pac versus the top six in any other league. And I bet there's a lot of GMs in the NFL that would probably agree with that. Pac-12, Big 12, Big 10, and one SEC team represented. Balance. I'm, yeah, God, I'm forbid. God forbid. God <laughs> forbid. Yeah, you're an epic professional, but if you want to work fa la 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 llama into the call tomorrow, feel free. Yo, don't, we don't appreciate do you hanging out with us. Don't do it. I'll send you where to get the sweater. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Congrats on your success, too. It's been fun watching. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. In the meantime, we got to get you caught up on all the college football action happening all across the country. It is time for Conference Call. Messaging can be extremely important. Both Ryan Day and Mike Loxley understand that as both delivered very different but simple messages to their team this week. Ryan Day's group has three goals this season. Beat the team up north, win the Big Ten championship, win a national title. He told his guys on Monday, we can accomplish two of those goals in the next three weeks if and only if we take care of business at Maryland and have competitive stamina. Mike Loxley urged his group to follow four steps. Number one, believe. Believe that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Number two, have the confidence to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. Three, preparation. The belief and confidence should urge you in your preparation this week. And number four, when you get on the football field, fight like hell. Loxley said that the most dangerous kind of person in the world is someone who has nothing to lose. He hopes those steps and that mindset leads his team to a victory and a massive upset on the weekend. Kelsey Riggs coming to you from a very chilly wig forest where tomorrow night is going to be a great night for the Demon Deacons as they have 22 seniors that are going to be honored. And this senior class has meant so much to this program. They've had them in the top 10 in the college football rankings once in each of the last two years, including this season. So that is a big feat. And that has a lot to do with their quarterback, Sam Hartman, who will be honored on this field tomorrow. And I talked to him about the emotion of it. And he says it's not really going to hit him until he walks off Truist Field for the first time. Now, he's not the only quarterback that's going to feel right at home. Actually, Syracuse quarterback Garrett Schrader, he is from Charlotte, not far down the road, just over an hour. He says there's going to be about 25 friends and family members sitting in this stadium tomorrow coming to see him play. He knows Sam Hartman because they both played at different high schools in the Charlotte area against each other, and they have a lot of respect for each other. But one of the things he made sure to mention jokingly to me is that he said, you know, when it comes down to who's the best looking quarterback in the ACC, I always tell Sam Hartman he's always going to be second best because obviously he thinks it's him that's first best. So these guys definitely know each other well off the field from their high school days. A lot of respect for what they have been able to do for their programs here in the ACC and we will see who wins the actual quarterback battle and the game tomorrow here at Wake Forest. Take a good look. You're not going to see it for a long time. You go. You guys know me if you ever see me. I like to dress nice. I've been dressing up since I was in the league. So. And I had a plate full of uh, like uh, bacon and eggs and brisket. And we're on the golf cart. Like, oh, hey, we're getting paid today. But yeah. Hey, Gary, what hey, time is it? Game time. All right, we're going to play a game. You know how this goes. We just showed you what we thought were going to be two incredibly special guests. Joining us, Roman Harper. 
and Ryan McGee. <laughs> Roman Harper is to the south, but that's okay. Hey, that's fine. I thought he was going to try to I'm kiss I'm going to keep me. doing this. Like, I'm just going to keep hitting him in the weird. face with it. All right. <laughs> it is Mickey Mouse's 94th birthday today, hey, right? Shout out and so, happy birthday to the big boss. You know what I'm talking about? And he is the boss, <laughs> and, and Ryan McGee coming out with the flavor. I mean, that is the – I thought the follow la la llama sweater was good. You have outdone me yes. with the Mickey Mouse sweater. We're going to have a little game. This is Mickey's birthday party, all right, with Marty and McGee. It's, we're going to work with McGee. It's Mickey's birthday party with McGee. So we're yeah. going to throw it's at the McGee. targets. Yeah, yeah it's me and, me and Ryan McGee instead of me and Bobby McGee. Have we done this as a cover song yet? Sure. Okay, we're going to work on that. Yeah. We'll throw I've it over. I've never gotten that before. No one's ever sung that to me before in a bar. <laughs> when it hits the target, think it's being snarky. <laughs> we hit the target. It's going to bring up a scenario of somebody that may show up to Mickey Mouse's birthday party, and then we'll figure out what that scenario looks like. Right, McGee, you ready for this? This is a little bit of improv, I'm McGee. Here ready. we go. Jason keeps trying to kiss okay. me. Yeah. We're at 11. We're at 11. Yeah. All right, so let's see what happens at 11 as it comes up on the screen. All right. Oh. Oh. Oh, and we got a nice jingle. Uh, McGee, the question to you is Mickey asks <laughs> Nick Saban to make a toast. Can, can, I, can, I, can I do this? Be like, <laughs> what Nick, would Nick make a toast. say The 8-2 and two Crimson Tide head coach? Okay. All right, so 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 Nick Saban is talking to Mickey. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, he's okay. taking a toast. Yeah. So, um, all right. So if Nick if Nick Saban is talking to Mickey, then he's got to have the this in the soda bottle. But if you ever seen a Nick Saban press conference, the bottle's always ah, there. Yes. And if Nick Saban, who's eight and two currently and is not going to be in the college football playoff, is talking to Mickey, he's yeah. going, Mick, you do a great job of being Mick. <laughs> but you've got to do a better job of being your best Mick. That's good. And you got it when you're not just Willie, you're Steamboat <laughs> Willie, because that's who you have to be. Now listen, you can be whoever you want to be. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that. But what I'm telling you is that on your birthday, you need the best, be the best Mick that you can possibly be, and drink this soda that's in this bottle that's on my plate. <laughs> is Nick Saban I mean, joining us right now? I also, I just do it again because I, I like. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable with how good that was. He probably would ask Mickey if he could play some defense for him, too, because Lord knows he needs some gamers. All right, next up, Mickey needs a cornhole partner. Should he ask world record holder Marty Smith, even though we think his foot was on the line? Correct. No, his foot was definitely on the line. Yeah, My father, see. who was a, a, a college football official forever, and he did have most of the calls in his career were was if receiver out of bounds or inbounds, yeah. and dad's immediately texting me going, I'm sorry, toes on the line, he's yeah, out of bounds. See. However, I'll say this. Mickey, I know Mickey has some money in the bank, yep. uh, but yep. I don't know that Mickey can afford Marty as a partner Ooh. anymore. Prior to the world record, maybe, but after the world record, I haven't seen Marty all day. My understanding is that he's a, they have some secret society of Guinness world record holders, and he's been there all day, so maybe he'll that be makes, at the show tomorrow. Maybe that makes like complete Roman, sense. And he'll, uh, maybe Roman's at that meeting. I don't know. <laughs> Mickey, it makes complete sense. We did that commercial with Marty, and he had his own bay, it seemed like. All right, uh, we're back on 11 here. We need another question. Mickey's party needs music. Who should take the ox and what would they play? The ox cord uh, is the I thing you plug in you your phone. Have, yeah. No, I, you go back to me back in the day when I was about 11, 12 years old and I had all of the albums. I had like the Mickey Mouse disco album. That's how old I am. Oh my there, you, I actually saw this in like a, I saw this in a vintage record store in Knoxville a couple weeks ago. And it's like a Mickey Mouse disco album and it's, uh, it's not great, but it was great when I was 12, and I feel like y- y'all heard the birthday song, right? I wake my daughter up every year to this Disney birthday song on the YouTube. Dude, this guy, this guy's tried and true. All right, Mickey Mi- fam. Mickey's friend thinks Fitz is cute. Uh huh. Of the three of you, who makes the best wingman? Wow. <laughs> Which one of Mickey's friends is blind? Oh, this wow. is. <laughs> <The> blatant disrespect. <laughs> hey, dude, the, the hey, ball sticks to uh, your listen, sweater. Listen. I think it's well documented. If you look at the graphic on the screen now, yep. it's Roman and McGee. Yep. If you look at the logo on the show that I co-host on Saturday morning, it's Marty and McGee. If the if your first name is And and McGee, I'm the wingman. That's literally <laughs> who I am. So yes. Oh, that's perfect. We'll go with me as the wingman. Oh man. Here, take the other guy in Wham thing. is a pretty good gig, and I'll take that gig. <laughs> Marty, I think we only got a couple more for you, and then you can leave the party. He's not Marty. He's Ryan. That's what I meant to say. That's what I, that's what I meant to say. See, that's my point. <laughs> that's that's what, my point. That is it right there. 
That is ex <laughs> you know you're the wingman when they call you by the now now call me Roman. Let's just go on and get that out of the way. You know, when I do radio hits, we do radio hits all the time, right? Whenever like like Spanky and the sports freaks and whatever yeah. thing whenever they say Marty, I hang up. Oh, so that's... I can't hang up here because I'm sitting on yeah, the set. Yeah, that's, and, that's but, my you know, bad. Can I I'm going to just read this one. Mickey is concerned Vols fans are getting their hopes up for the CFP. Should he feel this way? Uh, we're talking about uh, Vols fans that is in my in-laws. Correct. In my college room. Hang on one second. Hey, Marty, they want to know what you think. <laughs> Present company oh, he's not here. Uh, included as well, so you can include yourself. Oh, Ryan, I'm so get, sorry. No, get, I say get your hopes up. No, hey, up. somebody has to lose the game. Somebody has to lose the game. And someone's going to lose between Michigan and Ohio State. So, yeah, I think if you're Tennessee, you should get your hopes. Hey, Alabama has proven it. If you kick back and let everybody else wear each other out on championship weekend, you can totally get into the playoffs. The logic what is, I know the logic is, is that nails. you do it better than anybody, especially guys particularly named Roman and Marty. That's, That's it fact. for us. Come back next That's week right fact. here for the kickoff. He's Gary Streisky. I'm Jason Fitz. He's some guy named Marty or McGee. I don't know, but I know we'll be back here next week. Thanks for hanging McGee out. He is a us. national treasure. It's, it's a kickoff presented by Ram Trucks. <laughs>